Introduction to Evolution This sound file contains a spoken version of a Wikipedia article on Introduction to Evolution. The material recorded is current as on the 9th of July, 2012. The sound recording of this article has been made in four parts. You are listening to the first part, which contains the introduction, contents, and section one, natural selection. The second part contains sections two, three, and four, which deals with the topics of source of variation, genetic drift, and modern evolutionary synthesis. The third part, part three, contains section five, evidence for evolution. The fourth part, part four, is the last part, and contains sections six to eight, which deal with co-evolution, species, and mechanism. The first part begins now. Introduction to Evolution From Wikipedia, a free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org Introduction Evolution is the process of change in all forms of life over generations, and evolutionary biology is the study of how evolution occurs. The biodiversity of life evolves by means of mutation, changes in an organism's hereditary information, genetic drift, the frequency of genetic diversity in a population due to a random selection of mate or sexual reproduction, and natural selection, the non-random and gradual process of natural variation by which observable traits, such as eye color, become more or less common in a population. All individuals are supplied with hereditary material in the form of genes that are received from their parents, then passed on to their offspring. And among offspring there are variations of genes due to the introduction of new genes via random changes called mutations or reshuffling of existing genes during sexual reproduction. This process is called genetic drift. The offspring differs from the parent in minor random ways. If these differences are helpful, the offspring is more likely to survive and reproduce. This means that more offspring in the next generation will have that helpful difference and individuals will not have equal chances of reproductive success. Traits that result in organisms being better adapted to their living conditions become more common in descendant populations. These differences accumulate, resulting in changes within the population. Over time, populations branch off to become new species as they would become separated. This process is responsible for the many diverse life forms in the world. The forces of evolution are most evident when populations become isolated, either through geographic distance or by mechanisms that prevent genetic exchange. Over time, isolated populations can branch off into new species. The majority of genetic mutation neither assist, change the appearance of, nor bring harm to individuals. Through the process of genetic drift, these mutated genes are neutrally sorted 
among populations and survive across generations by chance alone. In contrast to genetic drift, natural selection is not a random process because it acts on traits that are necessary for survival. Natural selection and random genetic drift are constant and dynamic parts of life, and over time this has shaped the branching structure in the tree of life. The modern understanding of evolution began with the 1859 publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species. In addition, Gregor Mendel's work with plants helped to explain the hereditary patterns of genetics. Fossil discoveries in paleontology, advances in population genetics, and a global network of scientific research have provided further details into the mechanisms of evolution. Scientists now have a good understanding of the origin of new species, speciation, and have observed the speciation process in the laboratory and in the wild. Evolution is the principal theory that biologists use to understand life that is used in many disciplines, including medicine, psychology, conservation biology, anthropology, forensics, agriculture, and other social cultural applications. Section 1 Natural Selection In the 19th century, natural history collections and museums were a popular pastime. The European expansion and naval expeditions employed naturalists and curators of grand museums showcasing preserved and live specimens of the varieties of life. Charles Darwin was an English graduate who was educated and trained in the disciplines of natural history science. Such natural historians would collect, catalog, describe, and study the vast collections of specimens stored and managed by curators at these museums. Charles Darwin served as a ship's naturalist on board the HMS Beagle assigned to a five-year research expedition around the world. During his voyage, Darwin observed and collected an abundance of organisms, being very interested in the diverse forms of life along the coasts of South America and the neighboring Galapagos Islands. Charles Darwin gained extensive experience as he collected and studied the natural history of life forms from distant places. Through his studies, Darwin formulated the idea that each species had developed from ancestors with similar features. In 1838, he described how a process he called natural selection would make this happen. The size of a population depends on how much and how many resources are able to support it. Since organisms produce more offspring into a population than their environment can support, only a few individuals can survive out of each generation's there must be a competitive struggle for resources that aid in survival. As a result, Darwin realized that it was not chance alone that determined survival. Instead, survival of an organism depends on the differences of each individual organism, or traits, that aid or hinder survival and reproduction. 
well-adapted individuals are likely to leave more offspring than their less well-developed competitors. Traits that hinder survival and reproduction would disappear over generations. Traits that help an organism survive and reproduce would accumulate over generations. Darwin realized that the unequal ability of individuals to survive and reproduce could cause gradual changes in the population. He used the term natural selection to describe this process. Observation of variations in animals and plants formed the basis of the theory of natural selection. For example, Darwin observed that orchids and insects have a close relationship that allows the pollination of the plants. He noted that orchids have a variety of structures that attract insects so that pollen from the flowers gets stuck to the insects' bodies. In this way, insects transport the pollen from a male to a female orchid. In spite of the elaborate appearance of orchids, these specialized parts are made from the same basic structures that make up other flowers. In his book, Fertilization of Orchids, Darwin proposed that the orchid flowers were adapted from pre-existing parts through natural selection. Darwin was still researching and experimenting with his ideas on natural selection when he received a letter from Alfred Wallace describing a theory very similar to his own. This led to an immediate joint publication of both theories. Both Wallace and Darwin saw the history of life like a family tree, with each fork in the tree's limbs being a common ancestor. The tips on the limbs represented modern species, and the branches represented the common ancestors that are shared amongst many different species. To explain these relationships, Darwin said that all living things were related, and this meant that all life must be descended from a few forms, or even a single common ancestor. He called this process descent with modification. Darwin published his theory of evolution by natural selection in on the origin of species in 1859. His theory means that all life, including humanity, is a product of continuing natural processes. The implication that all life on Earth has a common ancestor has met with objections from some religious groups. Their objections are in contrast to the level of support for the theory by more than 99% of those within the scientific community today. Natural selection is commonly equated with, quote, survival of the fittest, end quote. But this expression originated in Herbert Spencer's book, Principles of Biology, in 1864, five years after Charles Darwin published his original works. Quote, survival of the fittest, end quote, describes the process of natural selection incorrectly because natural selection is not only about survival and it is not always the fittest that survives. We now come to the end of the spoken article, Introduction to Evolution, Part 1. The next part, Part 2, 
contains sections 2, 3, and 4, which deals with the topics of Source of Variation, Genetic Drift, and Modern Evolutionary Synthesis.